Alright, so, I decided to make a video of my day yesterday when I met Melanie C. Oh yeah. Alright, so, find out that Melanie C is going to be at HMD in Liverpool 1 on uh, October the 16th at 1pm signing CDs. So I'm like, oh my god, I totally have to go. I've been wanting to meet Melanie C since I was like 12 or 15 years. I've been wanting to meet her. So, all excited. And I post up on Facebook that I'm going to meet Melanie C. And I'm going to catch first train out, 5, 6 o'clock in the morning, first train out, try and get first in line. Somebody posted on uh, my post saying, oh, well, you should get there early because people are going to start queuing up on 5, 6 o'clock the night before. I like, well, I don't get paid till midnight, so I'm going to have to go. If I don't get first in line, oh, well, I just want to meet her. So, midnight comes around, and I'm like, alright, pack everything up, get my big duffel bag, pack up a big thermos, hot water, and my tea bag, so I can have a tea, and, uh, I get a garbage bag, pack my things in there, my camera, my notebook, my winter coat, just in case it's cold, in England, you can go through, like, four seasons in, like, an hour, so I pack everything up there, my winter hats, my gloves, uh, my, my winter coat, and uh, everything in there, Sudoku book, just in case it's not raining, I can do my Sudoku, my chair so I can sit in it, everything's all ready, my two umbrellas, in case it rains, one for the head, one for the legs, so my legs don't get soaked, I'm all ready, cat attacks at Asda, so I can get some food and some drinks, just to make me last through the night, and uh, catch a train to Liverpool, uh, catch a taxi, Liverpool 1, taxi driver's going, why are you going to H&B? Stupid o'clock in the morning! I said because Melanie C is going to be there and they explain everything. Well, it's like, alright, cool. And he didn't know where exactly HMV was or Liverpool was, so he called up and they sent the information over. He's like, okay, St. John Street, alright, cool. So we get there and we get to the top of St. John Street. And he didn't know exactly where HMV was. And these two guys were walking up the street with their McDonald's bags. So I'm going to ask these two guys where it is. So I get out of the car. He asks them. And, like, you do know it's closed, right? Like, why are you here at 3 30 in the morning? And, uh, and I open up the door, and he's like, You do know HMV is closed, right? And I was like, Yeah, I, yeah, I know. Uh, but, uh, you see, Melanie C is going to be an HMV, and a big fan of her since I was 15, so I want to meet her. And he's like, Oh my god, I'm in the show with Melanie C. Are you, are you going? And I was like, No, I can't afford it to go see her, so that's why I'm here, I want, I want to meet her, and he's like, we were just out with Mel, you should have came, I'm like, well, I didn't know, I just got paid at midnight, and he's like, you're crazy, you're gonna be sitting out here, alone, outside HMV, just meet Melanie C at like, 3.30 in the morning, he's like, yeah, he's like, you're crazy, he's like, what's your name, I'm like, Sharna, and he's like, Sharna, and I'm like, yeah, and he's like, all right, I'm going to tell Mel that you were here 3.30 in the morning just to meet her. And, uh, and I'm like, and he's like, and when you meet Mel, tell her Russell says hi. He's like, all right, cool. He's like, you're crazy, man, but awesome, great. So, uh, so he, he leaves and uh, taxi driver's looking around and he's like, you know what? It's 3.30 in the morning and you got, it's freezing cold out there. And he's like, he's like, you're going to be in the middle of Liverpool, alone, at night time, 3.30 in the morning. Why don't I take you back home? I won't charge you the 30 pounds for it. And take you back home, and then 8, 9, 10 o'clock in the morning, catch a train, it's cheaper, and then you'll still be in line. You, you, he said you can, you'll can get a picture with her and everything. And I'm looking at time, and I'm like... You know what? I'm already here. I don't want you out of pocket because you've been really great. He's like, I'll stay. I'll pay you the money. So I gave him the money. Gave him a two pound tip because he's great. And so he parked up at the top of St. John Street. And he looks up the road. He's like, you know what? McDonald's is up there. Ha Do you want me to buy you a coffee? How about I buy you a coffee? Because it's cold out there. I'm like, well, that, that's right. Thank you. I've, I've got a big thermos tea. And so I, I can warm up. He's like, are you sure you don't want a coffee? I'm like, yeah, I'm absolutely sure. He's like, all right, cool. So, get yeah, out and get my bag out of the trunk and uh, my chair because I pack everything up there. So I have to, like, take the chair out. And uh, he locks up the taxi 
and he walked me up to HMV carrying the big heavy bag. And then we get to HMV, and there's a guy in the HMV cleaning. And he knocks on the door. Knock, 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 knock. Guy comes over, unlocks the door, opens it, and he explains that I'm from Southport. Just caught a taxi here, and I want to meet Melanie C. And uh, he asked if he can take, if you can keep an eye on me, because I'll be out in the middle of nowhere. Well, not middle of nowhere, but like middle of the night. And he's like, yeah, yeah, I can do that. And he's like, all right, great. And we asked where he's going to be lining up. He's like, oh, it's just to get to the wall because it's out of the way. So, all right, cool. So I go, and the taxi driver helps me. Uh, Set everything up with chair, bag, crutches down, and all that stuff. And uh, I thanked him for being really nice and helping me out and all that. And he's like, "All right, you got your mobile with you?" I'm like, "Yeah, yeah, I got my mobile with me." He's like, "All right, any trouble? Just, just call a taxi for him, and we'll we'll, we'll sort something out, or just whatever. Just be really safe." Like, yeah, thank you. Yeah, you drive you you drive safe. Get get back south, boy. He's like, "All right, great." And he uh, walks off. I'm sitting there, all excited. Yeah, baby, woo! And I take a picture of me in my raincoat and happy. Oh, yeah, I'm gonna meet Melcy. Pretty light, yeah, baby. And then it starts raining. And I'm like, shit. And it's getting really, really cold. And I'm like shivering. I'm just in my raincoat and hoodie. So I put my, put, take off my raincoat, put my, my uh, raincoat in the bag, and get my winter coat out. Winter coat out. And, uh, Got, got this hat on, boop doop, this hat on, you know, just sitting there, this hat on, hoodie up, uh, winter coat up, raining, I've got the umbrella between my legs, got the umbrella above me, sitting there, and I'm tweeting out, 3.30 in the morning, I'm outside HMV, Liverpool 1 to meet Melanie C, hardcore baby, and I keep tweeting, and I'm Facebooking, and all that stuff, and I uh, find this Russell guy on face on uh, Twitter, and he actually tweeted out, uh, "Taxi man stops me 3:30 in the morning, uh, asks me where H and V is. In the taxi is Shauna. She meet you LC. What are the chances?" And I'm like, "Sweet, he tweeted, awesome!" And I'm tweeting mentioning Mel C and Mel and the uh, Melanie C's news. I retweeted, uh, and he he's, he retweeted and he tweeted to Russell. It's true with my picture, and I was like, awesome, I'm getting famous on Twitter, oh yeah. And uh, so I'm sitting there, all, and uh, this woman is uh, waiting outside at ACB, comes over, she's like, are you here to meet Melanie C? I'm like, yeah, yeah. She's like, how long have you been here for? It's 3 in the morning. She's like, it's freezing. She's like, I, I work here. And uh, Melanie, I met her before, and she's really sweet and awesome. So she, she gets let into the store and I'm sitting there, freezing cold. And uh, this woman comes up and she's like, "Do you want a hot drink?" It's like, "Oh no, I'm I'm fine, thank you. Yeah, I'm totally fine. I've got my uh, thermos, so if I want a hot drink, I can have a tea." It's like, "You sure? You don't want anything to eat?" I'm like, packed up my food. I got food in my bag. I'm all all set. Thank you very much. It's like, all right, cool. And I ship her away. Wind, the wind's coming. Broke my umbrella, ripped it out of the seams. It's hanging off by a little, the uh, little uh, metal things on the edges. And I'm holding onto my umbrella between my legs, holding on for dear life. The wind's coming, gusting it away, bends the top bit. Oh, I was like, oh my god! And the umbrella top's not working, so put it away, hood up, everything. It's freezing cold, so I'm like, I'm gonna take this hat off. I put this hat on. My little Canada hat with my ears there, cuddling up. <laughs> About 9.30 comes around. This really nice gentleman, I'm assuming he's from HMV, comes out, gives me a mug of coffee, and he's like, here's a, here's a cup of coffee for you. You look really cold. I was like, oh, thank you very much. I didn't want to say, I don't drink coffee, because I drink tea, I drink uh, lattes, and I drink cappuccinos. I just don't like coffee. It's awful taste. But I didn't want to say, I don't drink coffee, but thank you very much. Because he was really nice to bring up the coffee for me. He's like, thank you very much. And I'm sitting there, hands warming up on the mug and drinking and trying not to gag because I hate the taste of coffee. And I finish and I get up to try and figure out where to can take a bath to go out. Whatever, you might come out and pick the cup. So I put the cup down on the side. And about 10 minutes later, this woman I was talking to that worked there, and uh, she comes up, she's like, 
do you want to see a coffee? And I was like, oh no, I'm, I'm cool, thank you. So, a really nice gentleman just brought out a mug of coffee for me. And uh, it was like 10 minutes ago, I just finished it 10 minutes ago. And uh, he's like, she's like, are you sure? I like, yeah, so she picks up the mug and takes it back. And somebody else comes up, asks if I want a hot drink and the food. And I'm like, no, I'm cool. Thank you. Everybody was brilliant there. And oh, when I got there and I packed up this one of the security guys and the cool one comes up and asks, what am I doing? So I told him, he's like, all right, cool. I'll keep an eye on you, make sure you're safe. I'm like, oh, cool, thank you. Anyway, so I'm sitting there, hood up, the hat on, hood up, shivering away in the rain. And the rain was really coming and the wind was gusting and, oh, God so cold my feet and my toes became totally numb like painfully numb I couldn't feel it and I'm debating on actually going home because I'm so sore I'm so cold I can't feel my toes or my feet and I'm thinking no I'm here to meet Melanie C I have been here since 3 30 in the morning and I've been waiting 15 years to meet her I will go through anything like, if I'm having a heart attack, I'll still wait here just to meet her. So I'm in there painful, in, like, so much pain from, like, sitting there and, like, numb toes and feet freezing cold. And I'm like, I'm staying here. I want to meet her. So these people come along. Everybody starts lining up. And then they let us in. And I'm so excited. I'm like, oh, my God, an hour to go. Woo! First to nine. And I get in there, set up my chair. <laughs> And I'm like, what do I wear to meet Melanie C? Do I just keep the hair like this, just no hat or anything? I'm like, no, the hair is a total mess. And so I'm getting a picture with her. I don't want my hair total mess. So I'm like, so do I wear this hat when I'm meeting her? I was like, no, I, don't, uh, no, I, can't, I can't do that. And I'm like, but do I wear this hat? Show that I am from Canada, rocking out this hat. I know some people must say it's geeky hat, can't stand it, don't want, my ex wife didn't want to be seen with me wearing this hat, and she refused to let me wear it, but I'm like, do I rock it? I can totally rock this hat, like, it's me, I can rock it, man. I'm like, but do I get a picture taken of her with this stupid hat on and HMV? I was like, no, you know what, no. I will wear this hat. I got this a few years back, it's a Liverpool football club hat. She's a Liverpool fan. I'm a Liverpool fan. So I'm like, you know what? I am totally going to wear this hat. So I'm sitting there, HMV, all excited, taking a picture. Look at me! Melanie C. walks by. I'm like, oh my god. So excited. Oh, I'm shaking. The girls next to me is shaking, all excited. The doors keep open. We were thinking it's her. It's not. This woman comes up and she's like, I'm a reporter from Liverpool Echo. And we just want to interview the fans. He said, okay, we, if we interview you. And the girls behind me were like, interview her. She's got an interesting story. So they interview me. It's like, so how long have you been waiting? After, how long have you been waiting? I'm like, I have been here since 3.30 in the morning, all the way from Southport. All the way from Southport, 3.30 in the morning. Wow, you're a big fan. Oh, yeah, totally big fan. And then she asked me, what do you like about Melanie C.? Now, I am nervous. I am about to see Melanie C. We've been waiting 15 years. What do I say? I've been fantasizing about her since I was like 12, 13 years old. And as I got older, I began sexual fantasies. But do I say that? Do I say, oh yeah, I've been dreaming about her. I've been having fantasies about doing things with her. Now, I don't want to seem like a freak. So, I said, she's beautiful. And I didn't want to say... I can recognize her voice on the radio any time, because, come on, that seems a little bit stalkerish. <laughs> no way. So I said, she's got a nice voice. It's, uh, very smooth. What do I say? Like, come on. I don't want to seem like a freak. So I'm like, all right, that's awesome. Gets my details, my age, where I'm from. And, uh, and then she says, this will be in the uh, newspaper jar. I'm like, sweet, I'm so going to buy this and send this out to people in Canada. And my mom, my stepsister Kelly, all that awesome. Yeah, baby. So, she walks by. She And I'm videotaping it. She says hi. What do I do? I go, hi. I'm so nervous. I become so shy. And the uh, security guy comes up. He's like, all right, get your CDs out. And I'm like, oh my 
don't have a CD. I only have this. Like, well, where's your CD? It's a CD signing. I was like, I got stolen last week. And uh, it's like, oh, my God, she's probably really mad at us. Alright, let me ask. So I go up, and they said, she doesn't have a CD. She only has this to sign. And she looks up, and she's like, is that Sean the one that's been here at 3.30 in the morning? And she's like, yeah, bring her over. So I'm hobbling over, and my crutch is so nervous. And she's like, are you Shauna? I'm like, Shauna? Yes. It's like, the one that's been tweeting that she's been outside since 3.30 in the morning. Uh, just to meet me. And I'm like, yeah, that's me. And I'm thinking, she knows me from my tweets. She knows me from my tweets. Oh, my God. But I didn't want to say that. I didn't want to seem like a freak. And uh, she's like, I'm hearing crutches too? Wow! So she turns to what I'm assuming is her manager. And she's like, Sharna here. Came all the way from Southport. And she's been waiting outside since 3.30 in the morning on crutches in this weather. That's dedication. And I'm like, oh my god! She knows I'm a big fan. She says, like, I'm a dedicated fan. Oh my god. So she signs. The notebook. There it is. I'm thinking about getting that tattooed on my forearm. Like, come on, big fan. And then she gets up on the table to get a picture with me. And uh, the, I'm assuming the manager takes my phone to take a picture. And uh, she gets up on the table and I'm cheeky. And I says, would it be okay if we have a picture of you kissing my cheek? And she's like, oh, I'm s sorry, love. I got a bit of a sore throat. I don't want to give it to you. And I'm like, that's cool. I'm just happy to be meeting you after 15 years and to get a picture with you. That's cool. So I'm there and my hat's lit on and all that stuff. About to take a picture and she's like, your hat's covering, covering Mel's face. Got to take it off to the side. It's like, all right, cool. So I said, my hat's like this. That's why it's like this in the picture because you don't want to block beautiful Mel's face. Like, come on. So I take a picture. I'm there. Big cheesy smell. Meet Nelsie. Oh yeah, baby. And uh, she's like, "All right, thank you for coming." I'm like, "Well, sweet, no problem." So I walk over, and uh, before before that, I put my bag on after packing everything up. And the security guy said, "You don't. Do you want me to put up that off to the side? Because you don't want to be meeting Melcy with a big bulky bag." I'm like, "Yeah, that's cool." So we put my bag off to the side. So I go pick up the bag, and the interviewer's there. She's like, "So how was it?" It's like. I've still got butterflies, I'm still shaking, I've been waiting 15 years, this is amazing. So here the guy comes up, and he's like, you know what, you can get out of the way. I was like, alright, cool. So I pick up my bag, go to throw it over my shoulder, the st shoulder strap broke. I was like, oh my goodness, this thing's heavy, how am I supposed to carry it? Security guy grabs my bag, brings it up to the front, say thank you. And I'm like, how the hell am I supposed to carry this? To James Street Station to get to Southport. And I'm like, oh my god. So, crutches carry the big heavy bag and uh, walk it up to James Street Station and uh, go to buy a ticket to Southport. And he says, uh, you can't catch a train from here to Southport. There's refurbishments. We're refurbishing up the uh, station. And I'm like, oh, okay. He's like, you're going to have to go to Moorfields. Moorfields, okay. Yeah, I can do that. But Whereabouts is Moorfield from here? I know where it is. That's where I used to get off. But I don't know where it is from here. And one of the guys that works there comes up and is like, You know what? You cannot walk to Moorfield from here with that big heavy bag on your crutches. You can catch a train from here to get another train to get to Southport. I'll show you what to do. It's like, oh, Alright, cool. Thank you. So, uh, picks up my bag. It's like, wow, this is heavy. And uh, I explained to him, he's like, oh, big fan. And uh, we get to this platform, and he's like, all right, you're going to catch this train. I believe it's like the West Derby train or something like that. Like, and you need to get off at the next stop, Hamilton Square. And then somebody will be waiting for you there to take you to the other platform, to the correct platform, to catch another train to Moorfield. And then from Moorfield, you can catch a train back. And people will be waiting for you to help you. He's like, all right, cool, thank you. So get on the train. Next stop, Hamilton Square. I'm going to get off. Somebody's there waiting to pick up my bag. 
and uh, explain to him he's happy, explain to him why he's happy, all that stuff. And he takes me to the correct platform, he's like, alright, we need to get off at the next stop, which is more fields, and then somebody will be waiting for you there, take, take you to the correct platform to get the train to Southport. I was like, alright, cool, thank you. Uh, so, uh, takes me to the correct platform, and he's like, the uh, train comes like, it's quite high. Um, are you going to be able to get up? I was like, yeah, yeah, I can get up. And I was having difficulties because I didn't know how high it was. So I get on. He's like, all right, next stop. About five minutes. Uh, next stop. Get off there. Somebody will wait for you there. Take you to the, uh, the correct platform to get to Southport. I'm like, all right, cool. Get on. Get off that uh, more field. Somebody's waiting for me. I'm like, it's heavy. And he's like, all right, that's cool. And I explain to him. Why? You know, I'm excited. I met Mel C. I can explain it to everybody that I met Mel C. Yeah. So, I get on the train stuff for it. Oh, awesome. And all that stuff. Get home. And uh, Russell's like, oh, you're lagging. You're awesome. I'm so glad you met her. And these people are treating me. Awesome. Great. All that stuff. And uh, I, uh, I, Maybe between 10 and 11 o'clock at night. I'm sleeping because I've been up all night and I'm tired and all that stuff. And I wake up and I just wanted to take a look to see if Google posted it up. Google Echo did post it up. I'm like, sweet. And I'm like tired and in between falling asleep and all that. So uh, I look up and the, the, the interview, the uh, Mount C thing, the uh, article's there, but I don't see my interview. I was like, oh. So I fall asleep, wake up this morning, take a, another look, and I see next, page two. I was like, oh, all right. Click page two. It's there! My interview is there! Oh, yeah, baby! Woo! So I'm all excited. I post it up on Facebook, post it up on Twitter. My article's there! Yeah! Woo! So I have an appointment. Go to the appointment. Go to the store up the road. And, uh... See the Google Echo, and I'm there looking, to find, trying to find my article. And just as I find it, page nine, just as I find it, I see my article. Sweet! You got the uh, store manager comes up, and he's like, Look at the Google Echo. I'm like, Yep, I'm in here. I got uh, um, I got in here, and I'm in here, so I'm gonna buy loads. He had five there, so I pick up all five. <laughs> and uh, he's like, Is five enough? And I'm like, oh yeah, but I'm just sending it out to my family out in Canada, my mom and all that stuff. It's like, well, if you want more, I can go to the back and get more. It's like, nah, it's cool. So, I got the paper. Woo, paper. And then, page nine. Let's go in there right now. Page nine. The article. And if you can see, I'm just trying to see... Go over, and there's my name, and the article, woo, I'm so excited, posted it up on Facebook, posted it up on Twitter, Instagram, my little article in there, Russell, tw Russell tweeted back, and he's like, awesome, and Melanie C tweeted back, awesome, sweet, and uh, yeah, so I am so excited, an absolute dream come true, Fifth years I've been waiting to meet Melanie C. I waited 3.30 in the morning, first in line. She knew me from my tweets. I met a guy that was in the show with her, and he's all all happy I got to meet Melanie C. I was waiting for 10 hours, freezing cold. My feet went painfully numb, and it, it was worth it. Absolutely worth meeting Melanie C. And she was so great, so nice, and just happiest day of my life and I just want to document this on video all my explaining because I'm a storyteller <laughs> and uh yeah Melanie C was great Russell you were absolutely great help me and you mentioned me to Mel C she recognized me and when I said to Mel C oh and Russell says hi he's like oh yeah you met him too yesterday you met him last, this morning and so yeah she knew you and Brilliant, absolutely brilliant. It's absolutely greatest day of my life. I met her. Absolute dream come true. I've been waiting 15 years. So thank you. Thank you to the taxi driver, who was really nice to me. Thank you to Russell for uh, mentioning me 
to Melanie C and telling me where HMV was, telling me I rock, all that stuff. Thank you to the people at uh, Liverpool One, the security guy who was taking a look out for me, the guy in HMV cleaning, keeping an eye out for me. Thank you for that random guy, which I'm assuming is from HMV, uh, giving me a cup of coffee. Thank you. Thank you to the people walking through Liverpool One, asking if I want a hot drink. Thank you to that red-headed lady who came up and asked if I wanted a hot drink. Uh, thank you to security guys that were there who were really nice to me when they said we're bringing, bringing everybody in uh, HMV. I had a hard time packing up my, uh, packing up my bag and my uh, chair. And he started letting everybody in. I'm thinking, oh, sh crap. I'm not going to be first in line now. But no, after, when I was walking in with the bags, he said, all right, there's a security guy up at the front. And they let me back in the front. So thanks to the security guys. That were really nice. And thank you to Melanie C., who, even though I didn't have a CD, signed my notebook because I'd been there since 3.30 in the morning. And thank you for recognizing me and being so nice. Um, thank you to the interviewer for interviewing me, um, and it was just a brilliant day. Thank you to everybody. I love you guys, and I love Melanie C. And greatest day of my life. Thank you. I forgot another thank you. I want to say thank you to the people at the uh, train stations that were helping me. The uh, guy at James Street Station that helped me and told me I can get the train to Southport to catch me to these other trains. Um, thank you to the guy at Hamilton Square that took me to the correct platform to take the train uh, back to Moorfields. And thank you to the guy that was helping me at Moorfields take me to the train to Southport. Thank you. You guys are really carrying my bags and uh, helping me and just... <laughs> Let me listen, or ju just listening to me explain all that stuff. So thank you. I know that my bag is really heavy, so thank you for carrying it. Thank you very much.